Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and, and welcome back to uh, South Louisiana. At least, well, no, it's not quite South Louisiana, but that's what it feels like in Oklahoma the last couple of days. It, uh, you know, we've been, been asking for rain, put out all that seed, put all seed in the food plots. And uh, I said, man, we just need it to rain. Well, that worked. It's rained pretty much every day for the last three or four days. I actually had a little shower this morning. Oh, <laughs> The handle fell off my gate. Hang on a second. Yeah. Anyways, had a little shower this morning and the humidity has just went through the roof the last couple days. So the camera lens keeps fogging up on me. But, anywho, we are going to do some chores real quick. Got to get some things done. Uh, come down to the greenhouse, check on my seed starts and my seedlings. But before we do, look at this monster. Houston's getting a big watermelon. You know, he challenged Leon to the biggest watermelon contest this year. Gardening with Leon. Um, I don't know if that's going to win it or not. But that's his biggest chance. Houston's really been slacking on the watermelon growing. But that's not what this is about. So, uh, seedling. Seedling update. You guys saw me plant all these little uh, soil blocks just a couple videos ago. Getting ready for fall garden. Getting ready for the winter garden. Uh, so, let's do a little update. So here's the first soil blocks we started. That is a tray of beets. They're about two inches tall. This is a couple varieties of kale. Oh, look at them. Swiss chard here and collard greens right here. <laughs> cabbage and bok choy. Meh. We've got one little cabbage. Spinach is just starting to sprout and come up. We got a few little spinach. But check this out. This is the second set of trays I started. Watermelon radishes. Look at these beauties. They're up. Hailstone radish. Beets have not yet sprouted. And spinach, just like the other tray. Just starting to see a few spinach. So they're all doing good. This is not a garden video. We're not going to be down at the garden long. I just need to come check on these. See if anything needed watered, which they're all pretty wet. Still pretty moist. With like 900% humidity, you don't have to water very often. On a side note, how about my okra patch? We've uh, officially gotten lazy and quit harvesting okra. Oh, I was going to catch a monster grasshopper. But uh, the pods are huge and all the plants are falling over. I'm lazy. Need to. Uh, I kind of like to let them set for a while so those pods can dry out and then we'll harvest seed. I can't talk and shut the gate apparently. We'll harvest some seed and then we'll have... Uh, okra seed for next year so the other day when i was planting all my food plots for the deer a lot of you had questions of as to whether or not the goats would have access to that and no those are completely for the deer bears whining those are completely for the deer this time of year i lock the goats up and i say lock up they've got about four or five acres in the bottom here and i do that because i don't want the goats out in the woods where the deer are bear what's your deal bro I don't want the goats out in the woods where the deer are because you just never know. I don't want a neighbor confusing a goat for a deer and bringing home a goat for dinner. But everyone asks if we planted anything for the goats, any food plots or any fall crops for the goats. Well, that's what I'm fixing to do today. So let me load up some seed and show you what we're doing. As you can see we're down in the the newer goat enclosure this is the the area that we fenced off this summer with the new uh, sheep and goat wire that we put in kind of fenced off several more acres so that we could lock the goats up and not have them roam the whole property um, just to be a little bit more controlled but this area as you can see there's some bermuda grass out here but it's mostly kind of shaded a lot of oak trees which means there'll be a lot of acorns fall the goats will eat all the acorns or as some of you say acorns you laugh at me when i say acorns but while i had the uh well i still technically i guess i still have the kubota tractor and the and the big disc 
The problem is, is it's been raining so much, you can't really do much disking. And it's starting to rain again. Anyways, I caught a little bit of time in between showers. It dried out just enough. I came in and used that disc to just slightly, slightly disc up the surface of the ground. So we're going to be planting just like we put in those food plots for the deer. It's a uh, wheat and rye pasture mix. And there's probably, I would say, maybe an acre or so that we, that we disced up. Now, we didn't disc it deep and fully turn everything over. It, this will actually help the grass especially that Bermuda grass, you cut the roots and it spreads. But this will give us a good seed bed for our wheat and rye mix. We're gonna overseed all this area in here, which will give the goats something nice and fresh and green. Goes a squirrel. Squirrel! Bella, she's too fat and slow to catch a squirrel, but she likes to chase them. So we're gonna throw out some seed, I guess, in the rain. Ooh. So in my last video, I had several folks asking where, where I got this little seed spreader. It's pretty handy. I mean, you just, it doesn't grow seed until you push this little lever over and then you can set it how much seed you want coming out. You just have a hand crank. Anyways, several people were asking about it. I just bought this at my local uh, um, feed store, but I'm sure you can buy them on Amazon. I'll, I'll see if I can find one on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description box down below. It works great. If you're just throwing out a couple hundred pounds of seed, there's no reason to have like a big three-point seed spreader or a pasture drill or anything. For just little food plots and a little bit of what I'm doing, this works great. Look out, Bella. There's 150 pounds of pasture mix spread in the goat pen. So that pasture mix is about, uh, I think it was about $11 a bag. So $33 to go to help towards feeding my goats all winter. Now that, that pasture mix alone won't be enough to feed the goats on its own all winter. We'd take, it would take several acres if we wanted to do it that way. But that 150 pounds of wheat and rye pasture mix seed will go a long ways towards helping provide some really good nutrition in the wintertime months for my goats because because I try not to feed a lot of grain so it's a mixture it's a combination we're gonna have green um, wheat and rye out here for them to eat we'll have some hay which my hay is not the best quality and then those uh, QLF molasses protein tubs will add a lot to their diet that way we're not just depending on having to feed them grain all winter long. Oh, you quit? Turn the camera on you and you quit? Hmm? What you rambling on about, Big Mac? Huh? What is it, buddy? Hey Lambert, everybody's been asking about you. Everybody said, where's Lambert? We haven't seen Lambert. Oh, Lambert's still here, aren't you? You haven't gone anywhere. Oh, you're just a little baby. Little baby Lambert. Lambert was our bottle baby this past winter. Raised her on a bottle, and now she just thinks she owns the place. I really, really want to keep that. <laughs> that Kubota tractor was, that was awesome. That's a good machine right there. So on to something a little more interesting. I figured we haven't done a check in on the trail cameras in a while. Showing you guys what all we got coming in on camera. Everyone wants to know, you got any monster bucks coming in yet? You gotta look both ways for cars, right? Uh, no, no monsters yet. Lots of good young bucks. Uh, the hog situation is still, is what it is. So. I'll, We'll go check that camera in a minute, but they're mostly nocturnal right now. 
Oh. Guess what? My first food plot is sprouting. I see, I see green growth. Now that's success. This is Monday. That seed was planted on Thursday. So it's doing great, doing great. So we're gonna check this camera real quick. So before we pull the card, a lot of people have said, why in the world do you spend so much time messing with the deer? I mean, where do you live? You could literally walk out your door, first day of deer season and kill a deer and not put any money into it. Why do you spend so much money doing it? Well, there's more to it than just killing a deer, guys. If you're not a deer hunter, I know you may not understand this. There's so much more to it than just going out and shooting an animal and bringing it back to the house. It's I enjoy the management aspect of it, the, the growing the deer, watching the deer, things like running trail cameras to see what's out there. It's just exciting to me. I, I probably have more fun in the months prior to deer season and during deer season running trail cameras and just, just watching and seeing what, what all's coming in, what all we're growing on our property, and including bear. Yeah, we always have to include bear. But the management side of things, planting the food for the animals, planting the food for the deer and the turkeys and, and whatever other wildlife comes in is, is so much fun to me. I really, truly enjoy that. Probably as much, if not more, than I do hunting. Really? You a big wine bag? Well, I wonder what we have over here. I'm gonna step across the fence. Yes, I am stepping across the fence onto my neighbor's property. But this brush pile over here is where my neighbor always puts his dead cows. If he has a, a calf or a mama cow or something, an old cow that dies, which is 20 yards from my property line, which is fine, I don't care. But last year, I started coming over here every time he'd call me when he had a, an animal die and he would let me know and I'd bring a trail camera over here <laughs> and we got some really awesome pictures. So let's see what he's got over here. Well, I don't see anything fresh. There's lots of old bones and uh, whew, it stinks. More than likely what's happened is he's brought a dead calf over here and the, uh, the buzzards and the coyotes have eaten it and scattered it everywhere. But there's, you saw, there's like 20 buzzards over here. Better hop back over the fence where I belong. Ooh, wait, man. I'd say we're safe to say the pigs have definitely been here. <laughs> it's with all the rain, they've kind of wallowed this out like a pig wallow. Like, like it looks like what Dutch would have in his yard, you know, where he raises his pigs. They've definitely been here. So let's see what's on this camera. Jeez, guys, y'all gonna make it? Bella, bear, you big slobber dogs. Woo. Are you hot, Bear? You need some water? 441 pictures. Alrighty.
well all righty then so pigs are definitely back or here not that they ever left but the pigs are here mostly nocturnal as you can see it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a chore trying to get those to come in during the daylight there's no reason for us just to go sit out in the ground blind and hunt pigs that aren't coming in until like 2 a.m i'm not gonna take a kid out there and sit in the dark even though in oklahoma you could get a permit to shoot hogs at night but we're coming up on deer season we don't want to do that with deer season right here so anyways yeah so guys i guess that's about it i uh, got uh, 150 pounds of seed put out we're going to feed those goats all winter long with 33 dollars worth of seed now that's not the only thing going into them but they will truly enjoy some nice fresh green wheat growing in their pasture but guys uh, it's just just me gotta get cleaned up get get ready for work and <sighs> try not to sweat so much the humidity is like nine thousand percent kids are in school and uh sorry you don't get to see houston a lot this time of year but um we'll figure something out we'll figure something out we'll get there i promise you you guys will see more of houston as soon as i can schedules are hard to get lined up with each other when we're together and have the right time to make a video and blah 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 blah, blah. anyways since houston's not here i guess we'll let bear sign you guys off this morning That's it, huh? You're not gonna tell them to like the video or hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell and see you on the next video and all that, Bear? Really? Nothing? Are you at least gonna like do like Houston and slap the lens? Nope.